actor Antonio Sabato Jr., Harmeet Dillon, civil rights attorney, and Lauren Wright, a Princeton University professor who's examining the issue of celebrities in politics. It's great to see both of you, uh, all you. of you, excuse me. Antonio, I want to start with you on this. Uh, yes, this is pretty wild. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence, you don't get any bigger than she is as a, a star of the big screen. She announces mm -hmm. today she's taking a year off, and she's going to well, devote she all of her time to a nonpartisan group. She insists that it's only about corruption. What do you say? Right. Well, what I say is that she can take a, a year off because she has the money to back it up. She's making enough to take, probably take two or three years off. But uh, let's face it, how are you going to help uh, the community? Are you really going to get involved in politics? Are you going to really go out there and talk about the issues that we're dealing with, especially in California? Homelessness skyrocket. We're number one in that department. Regulations, taxes. If you go to San Francisco now, it's, it's unwatchable what they've done, the liberals have done to that city, and especially in Los Angeles as well. So are we going to talk about the issues? Are we going to talk to the American people? Are we going to help the veterans? What are we actually doing here? Are we just going to blame everything on the president as usual? Well, Harmeet, uh, I want to get to you on this because I actually think the desperation on the left is palpable. You feel it now. And I'm saying this because... Trump's actually winning on the issues. You see the popularity of the tax cuts today, a new poll out. Uh, majority of Americans uh, like what they're seeing. Uh, the economy is generally getting better. People are, you know, less stressed. Business confidence, small business, way up. So they're looking for the next Obama. Maybe it's Oprah, maybe it's Clooney, maybe it's a combination, maybe it's a new person. And, and so they, they lurch to the celebrity, yet when they're hit, even remotely criticized, they go bananas. Like they, they've never, they've never been criticized in their lives. But so if you get, if you want to put out the heat, you got to take it in return. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely, Laura. I agree with you completely. I mean, uh, the celebrities in Hollywood, they put all of their chips on uh, on Clinton, and then when she lost, I mean, they're kind of at a loss, and they live in a shallow, brittle world. It's all about their appearances. Um, and so they haven't really been able to cope very well. And when anyone challenges their worldview, they lash out with this incredible vitriol and bitterness, as you mentioned. It's really the last refuge here of what's acceptable criticism and threats of violence in our culture today. It is against uh, conservatives, and particularly conservative women, who uh, speak up on behalf of uh, the conservative values in this country that got Donald Trump and other conservatives elected. So, you know, Sarah Palin is fair game, you're fair game. Ann Coulter is fair game, Michelle Malkin, all of these people who uh, challenge the dominant orthodoxy of Hollywood have all come in for threats of rape, threats of violence. The most horrible things are said about you and other women, and, 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 it, and, it, and it's accepted in Hollywood. And I, I have a theory. I think that sometimes these Hollywood stars, they get into these projects like Jennifer Lawrence, who's 27 years old. She knows nothing about going state house to state house to get legislation passed. I think that's an admirable goal, but it's a joke if she thinks it's as easy as memorizing lines or taking your clothes off on TV. But I think that um, you know they do that because it's a way of expiation for some of the violence and some of the very negative things that they perpetrate in society that's coarsening our society. A lot of what ah. we see out of Hollywood is not positive. Professor, what about, I know you're writing a book about this, the perils of celebrities wading into politics without having taken the time to actually, you know, whether it's read a lot, debate a lot, think through the complex nature of some of these problems. Not that they don't have a right to speak out, but, you know, it's more than just, you know, Trump is this or that or whatever epithet happens to be in, in vogue during, during any period of time. Well, yeah, you know, celebrities are not going to save democracy. The founders actually thought they were an affront to it. They were worried specifically about people getting involved in politics and getting elected, especially who were practiced in what they called the little arts of popularity, fame, in other words. And so I think what we have to watch for is celebrities that are running for office for themselves, not advocating for other people because they're masters at uh, garnering support on their own behalf. They're not so good, as we can see from the research that we have, at advocating for other people. Well, I think the results speak for themselves. Antonio, uh, again, it's, it's talking for a living, I do it, you know, others do it. Harmeet's a major litigator in civil rights. Uh, Antonio, I know you give a lot of speeches. It, it, talking is one thing, but actually getting involved in the nitty gritty of legislation, policy proposals, that's kind of the drudgery of politics. It's like, I've never written legislation. I wouldn't know the first thing about how to write legislation. 
uh, but I've been doing this for about 30 years now, so like, it, I've, I've, I've learned a little bit. But what about the, the, the atmosphere right now in Hollywood, Antonio? You've talked about it, the lack of ideological diversity, or I'd say or even curiosity about people with whom they disagree. I don't, I don't get it because, I mean, the facts are the facts. Uh, they, they, they want to give all this money, for example, to Hillary. She was able to raise over a billion dollars for her campaign. And look at the scandals. Look at the things she's done. Benghazi being one of them. How could you vote for a person like that? So I think at this point we need to have people in Hollywood who are going to stand up for the Constitution. They're going to stand up for the great laws that we have in this country and not for themselves. Um, so I, I want to step up. You know, my campaign is about the people. It's not about myself. I left Hollywood to work for the American people. That's my concern. My community of Ventura County, my District 26, I'll do everything I can to protect them and to make sure that they have everything they need from Washington at any given moment. That's my passion right now. I live for this every single day. Well, uh, Harmate, uh, before we let you go, I don't think we're going to see the end of this. I mean, they, I think they really had their heyday during Obama. He was the celebrity candidate. I mean, Trump was mostly a businessman. He did The Apprentice. That was hugely successful. But he, he was mostly a businessman until he got involved in the, in the Apprentice stuff. But, I mean, Clooney is a star. He's a big star. I just don't see George Clooney giving up his life to just be another politician hitting the trail. I mean, he has a lot of fun doing what he does. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. No, that's right. No, he, he, you're, you're right. And he's got a successful wife who has her own career. I mean, talk is cheap. It, it does look alluring to get all of that adulation that politicians seem to get. But I don't think the politicians think about the downside. Now, when you look at some of the politicians, I'm sorry, the Hollywood people who are coming out of the woodwork the last couple of days, it tends to be people who are kind of on the downslope. you got Ellen Pompeo who came out and said some negative things and, you know, threatened violence against you, I believe. I thought she was retired. I didn't even realize her career was still going. So, you know, this is one way to get it alive. Michael Rappaport's another who lost his job recently. And using vile threats to attack people on Twitter is a way to get celebrity yeah. back for these people. And it's, it's cheap, though. It's fleeting. And ultimately, it's not going to make a difference in our society. So we, we need to look for leaders who are more substantive. The, the well, Reagan, it doesn't create a single job. Trump, you know, it, yeah, it doesn't create a single yeah. job. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is a huge star. Right. George Clooney is a huge star, you know. Uh, LeBron is a huge star, but it, its policy is not easy. It's tough, and it's, no. it is drudgery. It is total drudgery. Uh, and guys, great bean bag. Yeah, it ain't green bag. It, it, if, if you dish it out, you got to be able to take it. Guys, thanks so much. Great That's channel. Uh, President Trump, by the way, is responding to the Florida school shooting, perhaps with a gun control measure. We're going to tell you what's going on and what he may be banning next.